Brackies is one of the most prolific Unity tutorial channels on YouTube. It's hard to have any interest in game development and not have heard of the channel. It was one of the main sources where I learned a lot about game development in Unity around 8 years ago. Even after he left YouTube and gave us goodbyes, his tutorials remained as the one cornerstone of learning game development in Unity. But times change, the industry is no longer what it once was, and about 2 years ago I decided that it was time to move on. At first I went over to Unreal Engine, back then it was still Unreal Engine 4, but I did port my work to Unreal Engine 5 as well. It is honestly the best quality and the most professional game engine out there. I might love Godot, but credit where credit is due. When it comes to sheer power, Unreal is the obvious winner. But there is much more to picking a game engine, and that is something that I want to make very clear. In his most recent and very surprising video, Brackies came back, but now instead of Unity, he promises to create content for Godot. Even then, he clearly says, Now I want to be totally clear here. I am by no means encouraging you to stop using third-party engines like Unity, Unreal, or GameMaker. Nor am I saying that you should all use Godot, or any other open source engine for that matter. So I want to make it very clear that you should choose the best engine that suits your needs, and not just jump into Unity, or Godot, or Unreal, or any other third-party engine. Take your time picking the engine. Work with any of them whatsoever. The core skills you'll learn working with any game engine will always translate to any other game engine you end up working with in the future. It's never too late to make the switch to a new tool. And that's what game engines are. They're just tools. You can spend years thinking about what type of tool to use, or an even better analogy would be what brand of tool to use. What matters most is to get started. So I hope that anyone who is scared about starting game development in Godot because of the learning resources out there can now feel more at ease with Brackies entering the scene. But don't forget that the scene is already very lively. There are some absolutely amazing channels and creators already creating amazing tutorials. So give them a try. Not to mention the Godot documentation itself, which so far through my three months of experience has been absolutely amazing. There's no problem I faced where I couldn't find a solution just in the documentation. If you still want to boost to start your Godot career, you can check out my Godot template. The link for it is in the description and the pinned comment below. I hope it can help you out, and I hope that it can make your experience working with Godot a bit better. If you still want more convincing about Godot, you can watch this more long-form video I made about Godot versus Unity and Unreal. For those of you here for my Vuno devlogs, this is a bit different than what I normally do. However, I didn't want all of the videos to be about the devlog series. I want to create more content, a more varied content, especially as I need more time to build the stuff that I already promised. For example, the council system, technology system, spell system, and even the city development are all partially implemented, but none of them are, let's say, ready for you to try out. So my priority now is to get a prototype out that you all can play. And talking about the game or trying to create new features for every single video, I believe slows that down. So I'm going to try and create other types of videos up until the game is ready for me to talk about again. So let me know what you think about these different formats. Should I focus about talking about the different game engines, which are better, which are not, maybe even a few tutorials of my own, or do you think I should stick to the devlogs? Let me know what you think in the comments below or on my Discord channel. As a general update, this week was mostly working on the template, but also converting Vuno to work with the template. In doing so, almost everything break and they had to redo a lot of things, but I took this as an opportunity. When I wrote Vuno, I was much less experienced in Godot, and what I've learned so far, I do believe, is improving the overall quality of the project. Now, this can be dangerous, and I'm trying to balance redoing parts that need the work versus not redoing everything every single month and having nothing done. So it is a balancing act, and one that I hope I can learn to improve with over time. But for now, a couple of semi-significant things I did. I wrote a script that automatically fetched the resources from the folder instead of having to manually put them into an array through an export variable. This might not seem like much, but it does save a lot of time and it does improve the overall quality of my work. Not to mention that this is a general utility that you can find in the Godot template, so I hope that it can help you in the future, loading things in through the folder as opposed to manually having to assign these at runtime. I also started making the switch of instead of creating these normal control nodes with a colored rect at the back of them to represent the different menus, to actually create windows for the menus. So now you could drag them around, close them, and I can have different elements inside the window. I think it looks cooler and 
it's also a bit more usable and closer to, say, parallax games where you can move these windows around and interact with them a bit differently. I think it's pretty cool. Let me know which style you prefer and if you think that this change to the project is actually beneficial. For actual gameplay or, let's say, mechanical changes, you'll have to tune in next week. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.